Welcome back, Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me once again Dr. Quinton Henning. He's here today to give us an update on SK Mining. It's a very exciting story, one that I own personally. It is one of my favorite picks in my newsletter. Uh, it trades in Toronto under the symbol ESK, ESKYF in the U.S., uh, 163 million shares at a dollar 74 earlier today in U.S. money. That is, uh, so uh, you can see that it's a it's a company that has uh, you know some recognition, but I think not nearly as much as it's going to get uh, if it's as exciting and as good as it seems to be to me. So let's hear from Quentin. Thanks for joining us again, Quentin. Always a pleasure, Jay. Always good to have you. That's for sure. Um, you're certainly. Uh, I, I'd have to check. You have to be one of the. Uh, most frequent guests on our show because uh, you've done so much work with some of these most exciting companies, and it's really great to have you. But today we'd like to get an update on what's going on with SK. Uh, you have a very aggressive uh, drill program going on there, I think something like 13,500 meters uh, on that project up there in, in British Columbia. Uh, give us an update. What? How is the drilling program going, and what have you learned uh, this year so far from what you're seeing, and I, I don't believe we've gotten any drill results yet, or that is assays, but you can tell an awful lot by the drill core. So, so what can you tell us at this stage? Certainly. Look, uh, the 13,500 meters that you, you mentioned a minute ago, that's actually where we currently stand. In fact, uh, given the news release came out uh, about, two, well, for almost four years ago, uh, you know, now it's probably closer to 14,000 meters, but that's out yeah. of a program that's targeting a minimum of 30,000 meters. I think we'll e- easily meet the 30,000 meters. Uh, in fact, I think we'll, we'll probably be able to drill more than that. Uh, last year, if you look, we were able to drill into, uh, I believe, around the third week in October. Uh, at the current rate, with four drills operating, we should be able to get that 30,000 uh, meter minimum. And I'm hoping it might be closer to, say, 34 or 35 with a little luck. And the reason this is so important is uh, the drilling this year is really focused on uh, a couple of objectives. One is to to obviously st- to step out from the known uh, mineralization that was encountered last year at the TV and the Jeff targets, mm-hmm. which are kind of in the center, we'll call it the center of the property, mm-hmm. uh, but also test new targets. Right? So we, we're trying to... Uh, you know, tackle uh, the bigger property as a whole too, and and part of what's driven the the new target concepts is data that's come back both our sky tim and then uh, earlier this year our, our stream sediment uh, analyses uh, the mm-hmm. ble- the bleg analyses uh, for gold and uh, you know what, what what's really exciting is you know firstly at, at TV and Jeff. Most of the hills have seen, we have seen uh, visible indications of mineralization, very mm-hmm. similar to what was seen last year. All right, so in both cases, both TV and Jeff, it looks like those systems will expand as they step out around those. Uh, it looks like we, we can now see which directions they remain open, which is mm-hmm. where we can continue to pursue those. Uh, and, you know, we're in some cases seeing indications things get better in certain directions. So, mm-hmm. you know, stay tuned on that front. That's very exciting development. Uh, the mineralization, you know, this is a vulcanogenic mass of sulfide system. Mm-hmm. So we're uh, able to see the stock work and replacement sulfides in these gold. But we've also seen some massive sulfides, too, which is quite intriguing because the massive sulfide mineralization would indicate we do have uh, bona fide exhalative, like, you know, black smoker type uh, uh-huh. mineralization in, in some of these sequences, particularly at the TV area. All right, that's very exciting. Uh, and then uh, we've seen in some holes visible, uh, I'll call it precious metal minerals. Okay, These would include electrum, which is a, a natural uh, gold-silver alloy. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as uh, perargyrite, which is a, a silver sulfa salt, and then uh, tetrahedrite, another silver sulfa salt. So we, we see very good evidence of mineralization in these holes akin to what we saw last year. Now, uh, the crew uh, who's doing the groundwork, this is the crew that's out, they're, they're doing both soil sampling but also reconnaissance work, you know, getting out and observing outcrops and stuff. They 
they've been tackling areas up section. Like if you can imagine TV and Jeff, they sit on the west side of a, a north south trending uh, you know, ridge, mm-hmm. uh, and the the rocks that we're targeting dip to the east. They dip into oh. the ridge. All right, so. Mm-hmm. As you go up the hill, you're actually getting higher and higher into the stratigraphy. You're mm-hmm. getting up into uh, successions that are somewhat younger. And in theory, we should be getting very close to the sea floor, uh, the mm. sea floor. Now, that's the, that's, this is the, the $64,000 question for this property. Is can we find another SK Creek type deposit? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you know, everybody that that is, you know, remembers SK Creek. It was a mine in the, uh, let's see, about the mid 1990s, I believe, up to uh, around the GFC is when they closed down. Uh, it was one of the highest grade deposits on Earth. In fact, I think it was the highest grade deposit on Earth for many years. And uh, why it was, you know, it was just an exceptionally precious metal rich BMS. It was a layered deposit, you know, it was a sheet of uh, plastic sulfides that was deposited as a layer within the sequence and uh it was right at the paleo sea floor so why are we excited well we're seeing sulfides mm-hmm. up above the tv prospect in particular we're seeing uh mudstones with sulfides we're seeing uh sulfides in the, the rhyolite unit which is up there which is very similar to the rhyolite that's seen right below the sk mm-hmm. group deposit so we're we're very very intrigued uh with what's going on i think I think TV and Jeff are just the warm-up act. Is, is my hope that uh, as we, you know, work the geology uh, out and, and get a better handle on exactly where things are as we step up the hill, I think yeah. we might might find something very special there. So. Yeah. Well, last year I remember you, you saying it's it's possible that Jeff and TV could actually be one unit. Uh, is there any any further evidence of that or? Yes, look, uh, the, they have seen sulfide in and around uh, the TV and Jeff areas, and, you know, just extrapolating where they're seeing the sulfide, I think there's still uh, likely validity to that uh, that argument, is that uh, the systems are connected. They are also now seeing stratigraphic correlation between the two. So, for example, the TV, or the bulk of the TV uh, mineralizing system is indeed hosted by the same layers, the same sequence of rocks that the upper Jeff horizon is hosted mm-hmm, by. So mm-hmm. see that continuity too. Now, drilling will have to be done between the two, obviously, to prove it out. Yeah. But one of the short-term uh, objectives we have, they are doing soils, uh, so- collecting soil data across broad areas, including that intervening two-kilometer area between the two targets. Uh, so mm-hmm. that will probably give us some indication. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're also extending that north and south from Jeff and, and TV. Oh, okay. Uh, so you know, I look. You know, and if you step back and look at the sky tem, it's mm-hmm. it's clear as a bell now that you know TV and Jeff fall on the they fall on the east flank of the SK anticline. Uh huh. But it's clear as a bell. You can see that that east flank goes straight down to C10, the C10 area, which is where. Uh, we have a new target, you know, basically a new target that's going to be tested this year. So I think the whole east flank of the SK anticline is uh, wide open, wide open. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, you did have some some pretty uh, pretty interesting and pretty robust intersections last year. I, I can't I, – I meant to review that before we went online, but I don't know if you could give our listeners just an idea of what, what sort of grades you were getting last year. Uh, look, I, I believe the the biggest you know headline interval that we had. Look, we only, we only managed to drill twenty holes last year, so yeah. <laughs> it was kind of an abbreviated program. But uh, we hit a home run. We hit something like uh, I think it was thirty five point five meters of a little over. Uh, it was around ten or eleven gram gold equivalent. You know, gold with uh, a silver component. Uh, but it was a phenomenal drill intercept. It was you know getting close to four hundred gram meter hole, and that's. <laughs> You know, you don't see holes like that every day. That's yeah. Kind of, I'm seeing I'm seeing a headline here: 35.5 meters of 9.5 grams gold, and uh, I think it's 70 grams silver. So there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not bad. Well, I want to ask you also. Uh, you know, the Sib and Lulu. Uh, I think you were you only had 80 percent of that. Now you have 100 percent. Are you doing anything up there with that this year? 
Uh, well, it turns out actually, Corey, uh, the Corey property, which is that includes, uh, or sorry, the uh, Sib property, yeah. which includes TV and Jeff, uh, was part of that joint venture that we've extricated ourselves from. So we now have 100% over the whole enchilada. Yeah. Uh, look at at Sib Lulu. This is going to sound crazy, okay? But we we actually see better targets now elsewhere, mm-hmm. and. We, We've debated this internally, and I think we've come to the conclusion that this year we're going to be better served by doing what I said earlier, expanding TV and Jeff, but also testing uh, some of these new targets that we can see via the SkyTem and the, the Blake data. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think Sibalulu, while it's quite interesting, it does have some holes in it. And, you know, uh, they're good holes, but guess what? <laughs> we have some anomalies that look much bigger. Uh-huh. And might be even more important to us. Yeah, you got something called the C10, uh, which is right. mentioned in the press release. That must be one that looks especially good to you. The C10 area is particularly intriguing. And in the it, south, it's towards the southern southern end. It is. It's down to the south, and, and like I said, it's right on strike on the east flank of the SK Anticline. It's right on strike with TV Jeff. So I think there's, <laughs> ge- you know, geologic continuity clear down there. But, uh, you know, there's two reasons we're very excited about that area. Uh, firstly, the the bleg data, this the stream sediment data that we have from there, uh, shows a very long, about a six-kilometer long, uh, very high-grade uh, uh, or high, highly elevated uh, gold anomaly mm-hmm. in multiple drainages. Okay, so there's something bleeding out of the ground through that area. Uh, so that's one thing that gets us stoked. And the other thing that gets us stoked is, there are historic uh, surface samples down in there, that area that some are grading in the ounce plus per ton range. Oh, boy. Uh, that, you know, from, look, you know, it's historic data, so we don't have everything. Yeah. It sounds like it is BMS related. There mm-hmm. was at least one drill hole down there that hit, I believe, over a little over 100 gram per ton in sulfide mineralization. And mm-hmm. uh, John, the, the, John the Decker, the... Uh, Exploration uh, VP managed to find a piece of that historic core, and everybody agrees that is me about. So you know, I think I think the C10 area is basically, I think of it as an expansion of the TV Jeff story. Well, that is exciting because if I'm looking at it correctly, it must be C10 might be around eight or ten meters uh, oh. kilometers south of TV. That's right. That's correct. Wow, it's, it's, a, way, <laughs> it's a big system. <laughs> well, look, uh, we've got that target in the north, too. We, we call it the AP target. It's way up in the northeast, screaming bleg anomaly. Uh, and it's associated with a very discreet SkyTem uh, anomaly, which we think, you know, again, is uh, uh, telling us that there's a, a VMS system up there. Uh, we've got two new anomalies. If you look at this most recent uh, news release, there's two anomalies in the western anticline on the east flank of that in anticline mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that have they have no surface samples they have no drilling there's been no prospecting whatsoever we cannot find any historic data on those two uh, gold anomalies so we think those are, are ripe again for discovery of, of new uh, VMS systems uh, Quinn one one uh, just two quick questions are just about out of time here when might we see some assays uh, and also how well funded are you I guess you're well funded to go through this year, but do you think you're going to have to go back to the to the well next year, possibly? Yes. Look, uh, we we raised money. I think in November or early December last year, we raised about 13 million, which brought our treasury at that time up to about 15. Uh, we have seen some warrants exercise. Uh, I would say we started the season this year a little over 14 million. Uh, we do have plans to spend most of that uh, this season. We're being very aggressive, obviously, with 30,000 meters. But uh, I think that, you know, we will uh, get some results out here that will wow the market. And I mm-hmm. think that uh, once we do have to go back and raise some funds, uh, we should be in a position of strength. Uh, yeah. I would like to see this company continue an aggressive approach. You know, so next year need to see uh, another thirty to forty thousand meter program. There's no question we're onto a discovery here. It's a it's a matter of making sure we have the the uh, horsepower to to get uh, you know keep that momentum going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, as as far as uh, 
as far timing. as timing go, uh, timing, uh, <laughs> the labs are full. Uh, from what I can see, they're allocating a certain percentage of their their you know capacity, lab capacity to each company to try to keep everybody you know, qualified. Uh, but uh, you know, it's going to take a little while. Last year, we finished drilling. I think October sixteenth, and we were able to put first news release out with assays around the week, I think it was the week before Christmas, if I remember. Yeah, right. Just a, a little over two months. I would expect the same here. We started drilling, you know, with four rigs. It was, uh, I think, early July. So what is it? September, maybe uh, mid-September. Call it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to leave it go at that. But it really is an exciting story. And I uh, really, if we can put some numbers to some of that geology that you're talking about, <laughs> I think it's going to get really exciting to people. So, Thank you so much, Quentin, for being with us, and uh, we'll look to keep up with this story uh, going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. 